so I did something. Um, I, <laughs> in the hopes of getting this to work, I was following Bracky's video, surprise. And I upgraded the whole project. Uh, I created a, um, uh, I, I basically ported it to the 2D lighting system now. Either way, there was a very, very easy way to fix all the sprites for me, which is basically going on here to render pipeline, universal, 2D renderer, and it can just upgrade the whole project for you after you've created the, the assets uh, and the, these three things. But everything turned black because what it's been doing is it swapped out all the sprites here to sprite lit default instead of just the normal sprites default. Uh, but now, I think if we go into light, 2D point light, now I think, oh yes, there we go, there we go. Now we can have some lanterns and stuff and it's actually gonna react really well to the rest of the environment. Um, what am I doing? There we go. Uh, so if we're, for example, moving the, the model here of the player, you can see that it it actually, it, it can, you can only see it around the lantern where there is light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have maybe some light sources in the scene. Uh, also, of course, some interactable ones, some maybe some fireflies and stuff that is moving around to kind of light up the environment. But we're also gonna throw in uh, some type of like, there must be a global, yes, exactly, a global light, there we go, that we can kind of, we drag down the intensity, but it's just something so that you can kind of see what's going on even in the dark parts of the scene. But I think I'm actually going to swap out this global light because I do really like the idea of using kind of some, some light in some logical sense where there is just not light exactly everywhere. I'm thinking of maybe doing a point light. Maybe I can do this in a more, in a better way later. Um, but just something like this, maybe where we're still a bit, you know, darker in the corners and stuff. Um, but I think that's that's okay for now. Next up is actually going to be uh, starting working on the movement for the player because now we have created this <laughs> environment which has absolutely no purpose. There is no point for the player of being here. So. Uh, we should actually help the player to move around a bit. Okay, that kind of works. You can now, in theory, move the player. Uh, it might not be the fastest type of movement, but it works. It works. I'm happy with that. So something I really like... Um, oh yeah, there's some sort of gravity as well. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm like slowly gliding downwards. That's not really intentional. But yeah, something I really like with uh, movement and which I tend to do in every single game I make is to make movement very, very snappy. So I don't like very, very heavy physics based movement where you kind of glide uh, where there is like little friction on uh, on the ground. So I don't like letting go of my key and the character kind of gliding forward a bit. I, I do, however, really like when I I feel in control over how the character moves. And in some games, it makes more sense to have that, and in some games, it makes less sense. For example, in a speedrunning game, you wouldn't want a character that just kind of is super fluid, you know, and uh, and kind of has a lot of like drag to it, and and so on. You you want a character that is really snappy and reacts to your move, uh, to to your input really quickly. Okay, so that's a little better. Now we're actually moving in an acceptable speed. So I think that's gonna be okay for now. Uh, I think we'll have some type of system where you can aim with your mouse to any sort of direction. Um, I don't really wanna, I don't feel like copying the four directional uh, or eight directional kind of shooting pattern from Binding of Isaac. Um, I would like to try something with the mouse. I don't know if it's gonna be too easy or not, but we'll see. Also, there's absolutely no collision whatsoever currently, so you can kind of do whatever you want, which is obviously a problem. Um, I think the AI for the monsters I'm gonna have to think a little bit about on my own, and maybe that's something we do in the next episode. Uh, but for now, I'm hoping to get the movement right, maybe add some collision, um, and then think about what we should put in these sort of boxes. And so the way I've kind of imagined uh, this to go is 
I will make each level in boxes similar to this one. Uh, and these boxes will represent rooms and I will have a dungeon generation system in the end, which is very, very common for roguelikes. Uh, and since I want this to be a small scale project, I just kind of want some sim simple system of generating these rooms where there is a, a start point, obviously, uh, rooms can just generate in a direction where you can go and then at some point in the dungeon there is an end room uh, and I'm not sure if that should contain a boss or not just just something of value at least um, but yeah and then I'm thinking that some of these rooms could be uh, some form of like resource focus room some might contain both uh, enemies to defeat and also maybe some bigger treasure there and then in the end maybe you have a chance to use these resources craft something for the next floor because although i really like the element of rng in roguelikes where you kind of just have to deal with what's thrown at you and overcome challenges being creative with that uh, it, it is really nice nice how there's like a an important choice in what you take and how that affects your other stuff but i do also like the shop element of the roguelike which many many different games have where you can choose an item to buy so this would kind of be a replacement of that i feel like maybe some kind of system where you are in charge of what you craft uh, maybe you can use that maybe you can get some random components as reward from uh, from monsters i don't know and you use that with with resources that you can harvest on your way to to craft better weapons for the next floors i'm not really sure yet but that's kind of what i'm going for now so each floor should contain some kind of like enemy there we go uh, maybe some sort of like here's a tree um, and <laughs> maybe in some rooms there is only enemies and maybe in some rooms it's just filled with a bunch of trees because whoops who doesn't like trees am i right i'm also gonna create some form of very very basic animation to start with um a mistake that i often do when just in general when working with games is i i tend to kind of go into perfection with every small little component ever which leaves me little to, ro to uh, little to no room to actually playtest what i'm doing and trying out how it feels and you know how the core game loop works all together and stuff and the problem with that is that when you have polished a bunch of things you get attached and you won't let go of those things and it's really, really difficult when you have spent a lot of time on polishing stuff and you really like them because they look pretty, they feel nice, but then the game doesn't work uh, all together, like with all the pieces actually in place. So what I'm trying to do uh, to get better as a, as a game developer in general is to keep things in a very, very basic shape where I don't go into detail. And if I'm unhappy with something, that's okay because it's gonna bother me in the long run and I'm gonna remake it. So that's fine. But I think very, very basic stuff just to, just, just so that it's good enough for you to see what it does. Like a walking animation, for example. Give me a second and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so I'm thinking something like this, but maybe less runny. This looks more like it's running to the side and not so much top down. I'm not really sure how we can make this happen, but let's let's give it a second try. I also feel like it needs some more character to the running animation because right now it's very generic and boring. Okay, there we go. Here we have some stupid Naruto run kind of dealio. It is not looking great right now because you're also not turning when, when you're supposed to turn. Uh, let me fix that real quick. Here we go. Now I made it actually turn in the direction you're running. Uh, problem now is that we are... <laughs> First of all, I hate this animation. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it just because of the... <laughs> <laughs> just because it triggers myself, but then I'm actually gonna swap it out at some point. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I'm gonna make it not animate when you stand still first of all and secondly the pivot is a bit wrong as you can see when you turn now It looks like you're teleporting a bit. That's because the center is probably somewhere around here where my cursor is um, So when it's flipping the sprite it's actually moving the sprite a bit so i'm gonna have to fix that real quick 
Yeah, so here's um, a few problems. The model is actually up here for whatever reason. That's supposed to be centered. And all these components are also supposed to be centered. So it ends up somewhere here. Now, hopefully that should fix it because now the center point, the pivot up here is actually in here. It's very easy, easy to get confused with the center here, which shows a very different spot than the actual pivot. That's the point where everything in Unity, uh, it, it uses this point uh, when, uh, when using it as references in the code. So it's very important that the pivot is actually where you want it to be. Because also when you rotate something, it rotates around the pivot. So for example, I could put the pivot, uh, I could put the model up here. And when I rotate it now, as you can see, it rotates around that, uh, that center point. So you can do some cool stuff. That's how, for example, we're gonna do with a weapon later on. We're gonna set the pivot of the arms, not here because currently they rotate like propellers like this. We don't really want that because that's not how my arm rotates at least. Uh, we're instead gonna, I think you can actually uh, custom set the pivots in the sprite. Let's try that right now. If we go into sprite editors, yes, so here we go. Here, this point here, I think is where we want it to, where, where we want the pivot to be and where we want things to rotate by. So if we put this point here on both arms where the shoulder is and the feet, we can put them, actually let's not mess with the feet because this might actually destroy our entire animation. Um, <laughs> okay, we got one long boy here now. <laughs> That works. It's still kind of teleporting though, which I, to be honest, I don't even know why it's doing that. But if we look at the arms now, you can see that the pivot is actually where the shoulder is and not in the center anymore. So it doesn't, now it's a, a different type of propeller. It's just not the same kind of propeller anymore. You know what, instead of going back to the animation and fixing it, I'm just gonna keep it like this for now because it looks absolutely gorgeous. And I think that wraps it up for the first episode. So. This is uh, my first try at a small scale project, uploading it to YouTube and etc. Uh, if you wanna follow my daily work at Jagex Flippy, you can do that. Uh, if you wanna follow the project I'm working on with my friend, it's called A Flame, and I'll link the Twitter and everything uh, in there. But that's it for me. So thank you guys for watching.